Hey everybody, and welcome to Max's Faves, where I choose one of my favorite movies and tell you about it. So, without further ado, my review of Ordinary People. Ordinary People. So, won Best Picture at the Academy Awards, Best Director for Robert Redford, Actor in a Supporting Role won by Timothy Hutton, and other nominations. Ordinary People is a very complex, incredibly heartfelt, beautiful family drama. A family, a family tragedy. Conrad, played by Timothy Hutton, big brother Buck, dies in a boating accident. Conrad, the younger son, attempted suicide. He has the scars to show it. He spent a month and a half inpatient. Donald Sutherland plays Calvin, Conrad's father, who was trying so damn hard, so desperately hard to connect with Conrad. Such a loving, concerned, and devoted father. There's a great performance by Judd Hirsch as Conrad's therapist. These scenes are as entertaining and funny, which the film greatly needed, as they are powerful and central to the story. What a Christmas tree and everything was hunky-dory, okay? You're the doctor. Don't take refuge in one line as like, you're the doctor, okay? Because that pisses me off. It was his father's idea to bring him there. And now about the mother. Beth, played by Mary Tyler Moore, playing majorly against type. After Buck died, everybody handled it in their own way. The mother's favorite son died, so she broke. <laughs> well, anyway, Mary Ann Raymond started to just scream, just cry, right? It, it was crazy. We got so drunk that we couldn't talk to each other. It was, it was, the, last day, it was the last day of school. We walked right out of the building. We, we had, walked out. In the middle of the class. Oh, Bucky. <laughs> During an argument about how the mother didn't even once visit Conrad in the hospital, the mother shouts, Buck never would have been in the hospital. Hi. Right. What do you think? Very nice. What's wrong? Why don't you ask him what's wrong? Then maybe you won't have to hear it from Carol Lazenby. Hear what? Dad, I quit the swim team. What? Carol thought I knew. Of course, why wouldn't I? It happened over a month ago. Quit? When? Where have you been every night? Nowhere. Around. The library, mostly. Why didn't you tell us, Connie? I don't know. I didn't think it mattered. What do you mean? Why wouldn't it matter? Of course it matters. I'm... No, that was meant for me, Calvin. What was meant for you? It's really important to try to hurt me, isn't it? Don't you have that backwards? Oh? And how do I hurt you? By embarrassing you in front of a friend? Poor Beth. She has no idea what her son is up to. He lies and she believes every word of it. I didn't lie. You did. You lied every time you came into this house at 6.30. If it's starting all over again, the lying, the covering up, the disappearing for hours, I will not stand for it. I can't stand it. I really can't. Well, don't then. Go to your... Connie, now, Connie. Oh, the only reason Connie, she cares, the only reason she gives a fuck about it Connie. is because someone else knew about it first. Just stop it, Connie. No, you stop tell it. her to stop it. You never tell her a goddamn thing. And I know why she never came to the hospital. She's busy going to goddamn Spain and, and goddamn Portugal. Why should she care if I'm hung up by the balls out there? Maybe this is how they sit around and talk at the hospital, but we're not at the hospital now. You never came to the hospital. How, how do you know that the hospital? the hospital? Now, you know that she did. She had the flu and, and she couldn't come inside, but she came Yeah, to the well, hospital. she wouldn't have any flu if Buck was in the hospital. She would have come if Buck was in the hospital. Buck never would have been in the hospital. That's enough. That is enough. I want to talk to you. I need to sleep. No, in a, in a minute. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean any of it. I'm sorry. Please don't be mad. I'm not mad at you. I'm just trying to figure out what happened down there. I don't know what happened. I'm sorry about it all. I'm sorry about the whole thing. When I said I didn't mean it, just please tell her. Just tell her. Tell her I'm sorry, will you? Why don't you tell her? Oh, God, no, I can't. Don't you see? I can't talk to her. Why not? Oh, because it doesn't change anything. It doesn't change the way she looks at me. She was upset, Conrad. Your mother was hurt because you quit the swim team. I don't understand it myself. No, I don't mean just now. Don't you see? I don't mean just today. What then? Explain it to me. I, I, I can't. Everything's jello and pudding with you, Dad. You don't see things. What things? What things? Please, I want you to tell me. That she hates me. Can't you see that? Your mother doesn't hate you, Conrad. All right, all right. All right, you're right. She doesn't. Please leave me alone now.
What about this Dr. Berger? Do you think he's helping you? Don't blame it on Berger. It's not his fault. It's Paul. Okay, Connie, Connie, come here. I want to take a picture of Connie and his mother. Uh, no, I'll tell you what. Let's get the three men in there, and I'll take a picture of you. Connie, move in a little closer to your mother, OK? Prize winner. Yeah, that's great. Portrait. That is great. Do it. Page one, Lake Forester. Isn't it, Mother? Yes, it's yeah, I love it. Yeah. yeah. Sure doesn't count. Calvin. Hold it. Connie, smile. Calvin. Just a second, smile. Yeah. Calvin, give me the camera. No, I didn't get it yet, Beth. Come on, give me the camera. Beth, give me the camera. I want a really good picture of the two of you, OK? No, but I really want to get a shot of the three of you men. Give me the camera, Calvin. Not please. until I get a picture of the two of you. Cal. Hang on a second. Give me the goddamn camera! Smile. Who's hungry? I'll make it's brutal. Conrad's own mother can't stand next to him for as long as it takes to take a picture. She resents him for living and her favorite son died. There's a scene toward the end where Conrad goes to hug his mother after all the shit they've been through. She's stiff as a corpse, not knowing what to do. So sad. Said the father, when Buck died, it was as if you buried all your love with him. Now it's not all doom and gloom. There's a sweet romance going on between Conrad and this cute girl. In fact, this stands out because it's the first time we've seen him happy. And how can you not love Donald Sutherland as Calvin? To conclude, Ordinary People is a very complex, incredibly heartfelt, beautiful family drama. Give this one two thumbs up.